Good evening and welcome everyone. Uh, we'd like to call this regular meeting of the Board of Education to order. The next regular Board of Education meeting is on Wednesday, April 7th at 7.30 p.m. in the board meeting room. Thank you. Um, okay. We're good. Good. Uh, just quickly, our board member Jill uh, should be joining us a little later. She had a family emergency. Everything is fine. I checked in with her. Uh, Mrs. Ritchie will be helping out with um, minutes and motions. Thank you. So uh, real quick on a chairperson's report, uh, I just with this nice weather, um, I hope everyone is enjoying it. Um, driving around town, I see everyone out on the playgrounds at schools, which must be awesome to be out and about. Um, I would ask that we continue to follow safety protocols and guidelines so we can continue to stay in school and stay on our playgrounds. Uh, the other thing real quickly is the board was greeted um, at our tables this evening with some beautiful cards from our students throughout the district. Uh, so a thank you for that. Uh, very exciting to see some of these notes. I'll take a quick second and, and read a couple. Um, dear Board of Education members, thank you for working day and night to help make school a better place, to make kids feel safe, and you're always working hard and people depend on you. Thank you very much. So thank you for that. Some great pictures and artwork as always. Um, thank you for helping our schools be safe. Um, you don't just help our schools, but you support us. Thank you for all the hard work and for all you do for the community. You guys are the best. Um, so just a couple of notes there. I think we each got three or four, so very exciting. Thank you to those students, those classes, and those teachers. Um, we're here for the students. Um, we're happy to be here. and and do the hard work working with the great uh, superintendent and great administration, great teachers um, and great students. So thank you for that. Uh, with that, I will turn it over now to public comment, Michelle. Good evening. If you would like to speak during public comment, please click the participants icon on the bottom of your Zoom screen. Next, click the raised hand option. You will notice a blue hand icon appear in the upper corner of your screen where your face, name and or number appears. When it is your turn to speak, the facilitator will identify you and announce that you are unmuted for public comment. Once recognized and unmuted, please state your name and address. You will have up to three minutes to comment. Ms. Teresa Vogt, you are unmuted and recognized. Hi, my name is Teresa Vogt, 22 Circle Road. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about um, the pride flag that I was really happy to see is going to be flown um, at Town Hall, at the Depot, and several other places in town. And I just wanted to say, I'm really hoping to see that flag fly um, at our schools, at the very least at Central Office or DHS and MMS, where a lot of our students are definitely um, grappling with their identity or, or know their identity, but are grappling with bullying at the school. And to see that support with a pride flag, knowing just knowing that our community is supporting them is so important, be it at town hall or at our schools. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Vogt. Ms. Carolina Magui, you are unmuted and recognized. Hi, I think Therese has stole my thunder, <laughs> but I have prepared um, a bit of a comment. So I'll go and I'll read it. So my name, Carolina Magui, 28 Kensett Lane, two girls in the public schools, one in DHS and one in MMS. And as always, my initial comment is appreciation of, to the administration and the board for everything they do for our kids. I would like to bring your attention to an article that appeared in the Darien Times last week that caught my eye and got me thinking. One of our town residents, Michael Cortez, has reached out to several organizations and businesses in town, as well as to our first electman to fly the pride flag during the month of June, and many have agreed to do so. I think it would be fantastic if our schools would do the same to show their support to our LGBTQ administrators, teachers, and students who really struggle to feel accepted in our schools. I'm not really sure what the process would be to do so. Maybe it will require that this board in conjunction with Dr. Adley and the administration develop a policy for this with the goal of making it an annual event. I personally think it would be wonderful and that flying this flag will help these kids with feeling less isolated or fearful. I think it would be a message of acceptance and love. 
flying the pride flag would be a great step towards showing them that our schools are accepting, welcoming, supportive, and inclusive communities where they can feel safe and protected. And I hope that you all consider it. As the article said in this closing, and that really touched me, I too just picture a teenager who's, who needs it on its way to DHS and seeing that pride flag on the Norotan Fire Department or even at our schools and how they might say to themselves, look, I'm here, that's me. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mrs. McGoey. <clears throat> Stacy TA, you are unmuted and recognized. My name is Stacy TA, I live at 10 Clocks Lane. I just, um, I don't have anything prepared, but I heard Teresa and Carolina speak tonight and I just wanted to echo the, their comments. I think it would be amazing to see the pride flags flown at the schools and show our students and our staff support and love as a member of the strategic planning committee, we spent a lot of time discussing diversity and acceptance of differences. So I am super excited about this and I hope to see it. Thank you, Mrs. TA. There are no more raised hands at this time. Thank you all for your public comment. Appreciate that. Uh, moving on to the superintendent's report, Dr. Adley. So good evening, everyone. It's good to see you. And uh, welcome to those people who are uh, uh, joining us online. And uh, also welcome to John Shag, who will be joining us a little bit later. It is March, and March is Appreciation Month uh, for Boards of Education. Um, we certainly don't get much, uh, uh, many privileges uh, for doing this job, although, although I would say it's a, it's, it's a privilege and an honor to serve our, our kids and our families every day. Uh, but our young, young students, our second graders, uh, there's some award uh, cards of appreciation for you. And I would say that uh, if we were here in person, uh, we would feel a little bit more, but just because we're not, it doesn't mean to say that you should not feel uh, the appreciation for all of your hard work. I will say uh, on behalf of all the families uh, and the staff uh, in Darien, we, we'd like to express our appreciation uh, for all of your efforts. And I too would like to appreciate the uh, appreciation for uh, all that you do uh, around this table and working collaboratively in the name of our, of our young people. So uh, with that, uh, Marge, Rich, and Rich doesn't like the touchy feely thing, but anyway, um, <laughs> if you can help me out, just do a wee round of applause in, in, in deference to everybody who's online for our Board of Education. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Evans. Uh, thank you to the parents and uh, uh, staff for participating in the uh, parent conferences. I uh, will do a wee bit of a debrief and see if we have anything to learn from that process because uh, it, it does provide another opportunity. Uh, there, was, there were parents at the evening conferences also. So we'll do a wee bit of a deep break to see if there's any takeaways uh, for the future years. I wanna recognize the high school uh, for all of their efforts in trying to keep up with um, plans for the upcoming events that, that, are, that are taking place. Uh, the senior internships uh, were rolled out as an option, one of three options uh, uh, for the capstone as well. Um, uh, prom is going to happen and uh, prom is going to be June 4th and uh, very likely at this point uh, given uh, the sector rules that it will be on campus uh, potentially with food trucks uh, our students can get dressed up and participate and we'll keep them I don't know how we're going to keep them socially distant but we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll that'll be probably an impossible task but we're going to do everything we can um, to make uh, an experience for the young people uh, the sector rules also indicated by graduation, graduation, uh, the guidelines at this point um, that you can have an outside graduation as long as the number of people are socially distant is not capped at a particular number. Uh, so it will be our intention to have an outside graduation of some disposition. Uh, we'll just see how as we get a wee bit closer, whether we have to do it in perhaps two shifts or not. But uh, I think we're, we're closer to actually having some real experiences, culminating experiences for our young people and we'll, uh, we'll obviously uh, comply with whatever guidelines we have to, to follow. Uh, Port to the Graduate uh, continues its work now. There's a couple of meetings in April. I think they've met since the last time we met and that, the, that we'll bring to the board uh, by the end of May, uh, the Port to the Graduate to be approved. That, that's the timeline that we're working with. The strategic plan, we're just formed, uh, just format the, the website to get the strategic plan up. Uh, the publication of that is, is, in, is in design mode at this particular point. Um, so that's, uh, we'll, see, we'll see when that gets its final publication. Might just hold off to see if the book of the graduate makes it uh, to get it in, but uh, we'll see how those two things sort of align. Uh, for the SR2 grant, just, uh, uh, just 
uh, an update for you. Uh, we had 596 that we were getting. Uh, we had a meeting, I think it was the start of this week or Friday uh, with the uh, State Board of Education. Uh, they said that they issued the SR2 off the wrong base of, of the wrong year. Um, now that means we'll probably get a, about $140 less technically, but they're gonna send out a new set of directions for making everybody <clears throat> else harmless for that 140. So ultimately we'll, we'll, we'll still get the 596, but it was uh, a bit of a, well, we bit of a run around at this point, but we'll, we just have to be more paperwork, paperwork for it. It looks like the American Rescue Grant um, that we will, will land at the 964, that was the last allocation. We don't have final, final confirmation on this uh, and probably won't have until closer to the end of the school year or even, even the start of July. But uh, the last update we got was uh, we, we anticipate the 964 instead of the 1.4. We did go uh, attended the, the Board of Selectmen uh, last night uh, to as a first step in the process of seeing what we had to do uh, to acquire uh, the use of the basement as part of the capital uh, program. And at this point uh, uh, that we were received very favorably. And uh, it looks like we're probably gonna have to move back to uh, PNZ and potentially also uh, RTM. Um, so if those are the processes we gotta go through, uh, uh, we'll, we'll go through those processes. Uh, March 24th, that's tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, uh, we have uh, the policy subcommittee. Uh, we're off uh, Friday uh, next week. And the teacher vaccinations, uh, thanks again to the design, Alicia, and our director of health uh, for organizing our teacher vaccination clinic um, on the third. I want to recognize uh, the middle school quiz bowl last, uh, on Saturday. Uh, they hosted 24 teams from across Connecticut, uh, New Jersey, Massachusetts, and, and the kids and the teams placed really well. Uh, our teams placed, this isn't unusual for you, second, third, sixth, seventh, and 17th. And uh, individually students placed anywhere from fifth right up through uh, 20th place. But the number of kids who are engaged in that is just phenomenal. Again, so I just to advisors Ken Romeo and Barbara Ivy. We had alum who came, um, kids that helped out also, and there was uh, uh, staff and parents who assisted. So thank you for everybody who was able to make that possible. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Adley. Moving on to approval of minutes. It is requested that the board approve the following minutes of the special meeting and executive session held on March 10th, 2021, and minutes of the regular meeting held on March 10th, 2021. May I have a motion? Mrs. Parent, second, Mrs. Stein. All those in favor? That is unanimous, minus Mrs. McKem. Moving on, thank you. Board committee and reports. Any board committee or reports? Mrs. Um, Ackman. Uh, the finance committee met. Sorry. The finance committee met um, last Thursday, and we will hear a full update from Mr. Rudolph tonight. Thank you, Mrs. Ackman. Uh, moving on, presentations and discussions, uh, public school update, um, Dr. Adley. Well, uh, the couple of updates that we have for you uh, today uh, are the travel advisory, the CDC uh, revised recommendations, the sector rules for graduation, actually I just spoke to him, so I'll, I'll defer that one uh, in spectatorship. Uh, the, the travel advisory is a recommendation uh, it's not a requirement. We're not going to make that requirement. We're not going to re require anything different. Uh, so we're encouraging people uh, to follow the CDC guidelines. But there, since it's not required, um, I don't think that uh, we can. Uh, we, uh, don't think that we should go and require it. And we're not. We're not requiring it. But we are recommending people uh, to follow the guidelines. The CDC recommend uh, revised recommendations for go to from six feet to three feet. That's kind of where we are anyway, uh, given that we are all back. Um, but the actual, uh, if you have to be quarantined, you still have to be quarantined within the, the six feet because doesn't just apply to the three feet. Um, you know, you, you certainly can have opinions on that. I was on the call this morning uh, with the State Department of Education and the Department of Public Health around some of the inconsistencies that, have, that really are out in the public, really, um, that uh, when you come back into the school, it's a different, a whole different ball game. Um, I also talked about and I'll say that I don't, certainly a school system can use it as a as an opportunity to do remote learning next year, right? If the school system wanted to do that. Um, but the idea of remote learning, that can we make a, a, can we have a, some information on remote learning for next year? We're starting summer school. 
uh, we'll have to plan for next year. I'm not a big proponent. We're, we're back, uh, in all honesty. We were told to work with our public health officials and determine is it safe to come back or not. Uh, we're saying to our children that it's safe to come back, and yet we're giving a lot of people an opportunity to remote. And I understand and taking it. That was the way it was set up. Um, and certainly we would work with some children with underlying conditions or otherwise. We always do, right? We always do. Um, but unless we want to set up something remotely as a part of our educational experience, I don't think that should be in place for next year. I'm, not, I'm actually advocating for that, so just so to be aware of that. Um, the, uh, the spectatorship, um, moving to the spring, we'll do two for each family and two for visitors' family. That may increase too, to be honest with you. Um, we evaluate that every week and we'll continue to do that to try and increase where we can. It was an interesting week um, that was sort of captivated with uh, cases primarily outside again um, and primarily uh, athletics oriented in, some, in, in many of the cases. Uh, but again, some cases, when you look at them, it's hard to sort of see like, well, why that number of teach staff members or otherwise, um, without talking about any particular category of students or otherwise, it just depends the circle within which children and staff operate and sort of have to operate. Uh, so some of those uh, sometimes impact more, more students than, than others, more athletes than others, and more staff than others. The uh, current quarantine as of today is 165. Uh, some, some students have come back. Uh, the cumulative cases are 293, and the uh, cumulative quarantine is uh, 2200. Uh, we continue to make the case to the State Department of Education, given the number of people who are quarantined, um, probably a question that Mr. Brown brings up uh, occasionally, and, and, and the number of cases that that results in. It just seems that can we, can we consider other things, right? Have we learned anything? Um, and could we consider other guidelines or other things we put in place for next year based on what we've learned? Uh, so we'll continue to advocate for those types of scenarios. Um, the map sort of breaks, continues to break up a little bit. Um, again, at one point we were right across the board and uh, we've gone down. I think we're gonna have a wee pick up on this for next week because uh, there's, there's a few more cases that this particular week, but uh, as you can see last week, uh, we're, we're, we're significantly lower. And we had uh, cases of remote learners. Uh, primarily, uh, there was 11th and 12th grade. Some of that was, uh, well, the age group of the children who had to go out for quarantine um, and some of them for, for sports related. And then another one was like a, a fifth grade class that increased slightly, um, and that was because of that was because of a case and I had to quarantine the class primarily. Uh, so Alicia is uh, available if we want to have questions, but that's, um, thankfully, we don't have as many updates some, uh, because we're sort of back full motion. Uh, it is interesting working with some of the New York counterparts trying to, we are trying to get back just some of their even elementary students, like just an interesting, um, Mrs. Stein. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. open it Hi. to board comments and questions. And this time. may be better directed at Alicia and Alan. Um, has any consideration been given to talking with the town to collaborate on vaccinating our 16 plus students? Given the numbers we see in DHS in particular with the quarantining, is this something we could ask the town to partner with us and obviously make it voluntary, but it would greatly reduce our quarantine numbers, I believe, in DHS, mm -hmm. and it would also protect the staff up there as well. They actually spoke about that this morning um, a little bit in our the, uh, Department of Education and uh, Department of Public Health meeting um, that was encouraged uh, to the individuals on the call that might have um, the ability to, to encourage that with whoever is with the Department of Health is making those decisions, but I don't, you know, to do that once they open up the vaccines for all, they were encouraging that maybe we could do, could we have a clinic um, for high school students? So it really will depend probably on what the priorities of the public health department are at the time and the availability of vaccine. So if we can do it, we would try to get the public health department um, to be able to do that for our high school students. However, I know that there will be a lot of people looking for a vaccine 
And, you know, I just don't know if they will make that a priority group. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Stein. Mrs. Ritchie. Just following up with the question, um, right now, someone who's vaccinated, are they um, still required to quarantine or are they exempt? Once you are vaccinated and you, um, whether you've had two doses or the one dose of Johnson & Johnson, you have to be two weeks beyond the completion of the series to be um, exempt from quarantining. So that is that is currently the case. So we have some of our students who are post 53 members that are beyond the two weeks of their second dose. So they don't need to quarantine and we'll be able to do that for our staff when we get to that point as well with them. Thank you. Mrs. Ackman. So speaking of like, I was seeing your comments about considering um, lessons learned. Thank you. Um, I was just saying, considering what we what you're talking about, lessons learned, what's kind of our timeline for us on, from a curriculum standpoint as a board for lessons learned this year and what we might need to have in place or what we want to have in place for next year? Because the summer gets short. Like if there's anything for a board, is are we looking late spring, early summer? Late spring, early summer for just... Well, I'm saying a curriculum, like um, like block scheduling, right? That's a, that's a big change at the high school. Yes. We did it because of COVID. Have we learned anything from it? Do you, do you think it will be in place? I mean, that to me is an obvious one that jumps yes. up, but there are some curriculum things that might need to come before the board. I'm just wondering, when, when is that internal debrief such that we can plan kind of a board level debrief for the areas that are appropriate for us? So the, there, are, there are issues, just what you talked about, like block scheduling that, um, as an example, that that you could go through, you could go through years of trying to plan for that, um, and you've got the experience. So are going to continue that? Those are in the process now of being closed out. Whether we're recommending those or whether we're not, I'd let I'd let Christopher talk about his plan for the curriculum. But uh, those other ones are are in motion at this point in discussion. So the curriculum itself, I would say that's constant for us right now. Uh, this afternoon, uh, a group of there are about 12 of us, 12 administrators, completed a four-part series on um, the, the research term that's being used is uh, curriculum acceleration. Not to be confused with, we often think about acceleration as moving ahead and skipping. Um, acceleration is being used as how do we stay focused on grade level standards as we move into the next grade level and not focusing on remediation. Um, so we just finished that. So we're working on our plans to enter our curriculum summer writing, um, doing exactly that. So third graders will start focused on third grade standards, not on how are we back filling all of these other pieces. So I can certainly talk more about that at, if you wanna hear more of a plan, but that's that's our approach is we're starting third grade with third grade, fourth grade yeah, with fourth grade. Yeah, I think my, my question and, and where we're not changing curriculum and it's staying the same, it's fine, but if there are changes that the board needs to be aware of before the school year, it, the summer, as we all learned last summer, gets so compacted with mm -hmm. so much stuff. So just to start thinking, what is a board? What might we need to know about going forward? If there are approvals that are necessary, because we have learned some lessons, good or bad, keep it, don't keep it. And it'd be interesting to kind of see that debrief, at least for at a board level. Yeah, sure. Um, and that's also part of the reason why I'm pressing a wee bit today with the State Department to give us, continue to give us guidance so as we can, that will inform some of it too, but yes. Mrs. Perrin. Thank you. Um, Dr. Adler, you talked a little bit um, briefly about the contact tracing and quarantining. And I just wanted to clarify that you don't foresee there being any change in practice this school year. It's very unlikely that the, the, the way the, the wheels of bureaucracy are, 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 are turning at the moment. Um, uh, the State Department of Public Health, uh, understandably, perhaps don't have the, the educational hat on. Um, they tried today uh, to listen and to have input from superintendents, real input from superintendents about what, what the issues are and could you help us solve some of the issues. So they're open to that. I don't, I don't, I don't really anticipate that, Sarah, uh, coming into place. If it do, it'll be a wee bit of a bonus, but I'll certainly be interested for next year if I can get them to, to move for next year. Mr. Sini. Um, maybe this is a question for Alicia. If, if you map out the... Um, 
first shot and the second shot in the two weeks. W what data are we looking at for the staff mostly, or I guess it's three dates based on the vaccination schedule? Um, April 17th will be day 14 from our big vaccination clinics that we've been doing. So right at the end of that um, April break. And then the other staff that we've that were at the second clinic, they actually were able to get a Johnson and Johnson vaccine. So they're about a week away from being um, non quarantinable Is that a word? <laughs> no, that's 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 great. Um, and then in the second question, Dr. Adley, there was some changes in the physical barrier recommendations by the CDC. Has the school district done anything along those lines and changing it? Or are you going to? Uh, like the plastic barriers, I think was one thing. So, so, but even for uh, the the distance, and uh, particularly for lunch, still has to be uh, recommended at six feet. So, in, in many cases, we'll be using it for those. And uh, many of our staff, some many of our staff, use it uh, because they want to use it uh, for their their particular areas and what they're doing. And in their particular classroom, there is a wee bit of uh, there is a wee bit of um, choice in that, in that matter. And the basic Distance has to be in place and some parameters. If you want to use more or less of it, uh, there's, an, there's an option to do that. How about the elementary schools or the various things around student desks? Or? The, the elementary schools also use it. Okay. Um, any any goals in removing those from the student desk? Not, not well, I, I can honestly say I haven't had that discussion of removing those from the desk. Thank you. Mr. Brown. Thank you. Uh, just to follow up, Alicia, um, two quick questions. One would be looking at the cumulative number of people quarantined. Do we have any idea how many cases out of that 2,200 or so that was on the slide? Just to follow up. Um, I think it's still somewhere around five. Okay. Um, and uh, that doesn't include if they were quarantined because of a family or social exposure. I, I'm talking, I'm assuming you're talking about in school concerns where we're thinking that maybe the transmission happened in school. Correct. Yeah, um, so it's it's still low. And I, I think that that's something that was mentioned by the, at least two superintendents on our state Department of Education and, and Department of Health call is the statistical analysis of, analysis of that and, and what that would mean uh, for the future of quarantining. Um, so I think it's on people's radars and, and uh, it's being discussed at a higher level. I just don't know how quickly if or if they will act on it. Thanks. And just following up, since you mentioned statistics, the slide that was up earlier had the ratio of current uh, cases and current quarantine. And if you looked at that ratio, it was, a, I think, about 20% versus the historic on that slide was around 10. Are we seeing more quarantining now just as a result of everybody being in the building? Or um, is that just one snapshot and that's not really the case, that we're having more, more people being quarantined? I think that we're seeing, because people are three feet apart, it just ends up including more people because um, you know, they're closer together. So we, we are seeing that as a, as a um, you know, consequence of having everyone in is they're three feet apart. So when you're doing six feet, it captures more kids. Um, and I think the other piece is we've seen kind of an uptick in a, not necessarily from sports, but because now you have hockey, the end of hockey for some, the beginning of lacrosse and softball, baseball for others. Um, and I just think that that ends up affecting, you know, anywhere from five to 15 kids when you have to quarantine a team if they've come in contact with somebody on the team who's tested positive. So that, that adds to the number. Thank you very much. I appreciate the Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mrs. Ackman. Sure. And if there's any change to that, um, we would hear. But at this point, they are planning for some type of social distancing starting of September. So what, what I reported back to the board about a month ago or thereabouts um, on what the plan for uh, is still is still sort of anticipated that there will be there will be mass wearing and there'll be some social there'll be social distance requirements. That's what they're expecting. 
Okay. But Thank beyond you. that, they haven't said anything else. Thank you, Mr. Dodd. Could I ask also any change or what's the thought process, Chris or Mr. Tranberg or Dr. Adley on the, the Friday afternoons? The Friday, the Friday afternoon to the end of the year, um, that's the only time that the staff has in their schedule, given what given what we did to, to actually plan anything. Um, to, so I, I would not be changing that schedule. I, I, I can't change, I don't think I can change that schedule. Clearly you could, right? Oh, if, if you had to do something, but I'm not recommending changing that schedule just because that is the only plan of time given the schedule that they have uh, to actually to actually meet and, and conduct their business. It's just the way the schedule was, was set up, uh, both for staggering bus times and so on and so forth, it meant that the, a lot of the, well, all of the planning time uh, was missed. If anything else, Chris, you can add to that. Thank you. Sorry, to just, Dr. Um, Mr. Um, Mr. I, I'm assuming that also has to do with the chart behind you, the remote learners and uh, staff have to prepare to teach in, in two different manners. Is that what that Friday afternoon is being used for as well? Partially, the the big piece would be the elementary schedules at this point would have to be completely redone, which would be a complex undertaking at this time of year to the extent that when you think about our itinerant staff, kids would have different teachers for different things and um, it would be a bit unwieldy, I would say. Thank you. Good. Thanks for that clarity around that. Thank you. Any other further questions or comments around school openings all right moving along um further discussion and possible action on the revised feasibility study to remove the portable classrooms and update the libraries at hinley homes and royal dr adley and again we have uh, mr scheib thank you for joining mr scheib i think if i could dr adley tee this up a little bit i think as we talk through this today and i had some comments from people throughout the day um, I don't think we'll have any action this evening on this item. Um, we can have the, the conversation and see if we go there, but my recommendation would be we continue to look at any updates. Uh, what the board directed uh, Dr. Adley to do was to kind of finalize the overall plan of the library reimagined, um, school renovations we thought were necessary, um, removing the portables, and also looking at some of the capital stuff coming out going out the next couple of years and how that fits into the renovations. Um, the next step really is to kind of give a consensus that this plan looks good to move forward and the administration would be building or is building the ed specs around this. Um, part of this process, uh, if we go back to the Ox Ridge process is we would have a public hearing about this project um, and that's part of the process of moving it forward then approval of the ed specs and then um, organizing a, um, a charge uh, for the chair of the board of ed to move uh, forward and uh, engage the board of selectmen to form a building committee. So I think we're all very excited by this project, facilities, the whole board, everyone at the administration side, Mike Lynch and facilities have done a great job on this, but I wanted to true up back to what I think the process should be over the next couple of weeks to keep this on track. Um, so I think we can have a conversation around any updates or changes in uh, Dr. Allen, Dr. Adley's memo um, around prioritization and stuff like that. But keep in mind too, um, having been part of the Oxford process, while the pictures and the designs and all that stuff is great, that really moves into the building committee's roles and responsibilities. Um, but we'll have an opportunity to look at the ed specs that I know the administration is working on. So. I'll pause there and uh, turn it over to Dr. Adley, and then I'm sure we'll have a good conversation around that. Thank you. Uh, so again, uh, welcome, John, and um, I'm actually, you know, I'm pleased and excited to continue this discussion. Um, uh, essentially, um, essentially, what I, what I tried to do here was, um, or what I thought the charge was, was to, to sort of come with a recommendation of priorities uh, for the projects, and and then also present sort of a way forward. Um, I'm looking for, I'm hoping, looking for just a, a, either a task extension report or a direction that we're either going, we're going to try and move in this direction or we're not going to try and move in this direction because we're near, or basically at completion of the, the administrative work. Um, so uh, with that, I'll just comment on a couple of things. Um, 
I was asked to sort of prioritize, you know, the schools. Um, if I were doing them just separately in chronological order, I would do Hinley because of, of the number of, of portables, the condition of the, the portables and safety associated then. Royal I would do for instructional because I think it's, it's, a, it's got a higher instructional need uh, than homes. And then I would follow with homes. Having said that, um, we have had uh, a number of meetings uh, since even the last board meeting to review the schedule of Arcs Ridge, to review the schedule that would be perhaps incorporated here. And uh, uh, upon that review and upon a revision of some of some of those findings, uh, we're actually recommending that, that we do them all simultaneously. Uh, there could be uh, cost efficiencies there with contractor and architect work and so on, but that's, but, but we're just saying that uh, we think we actually can accomplish them all uh, simultaneously. The schedule that was that was rolled out a little bit was a tentative schedule to just give a, a sense of uh, what would be done. Uh, the, the May day basically would be voting on the ed, ed specs and then uh, trying to send to the town under some uh, some sort of notice uh, by the building committee and establishing a building committee, so on and so forth. If there are things that are missing here because of the time processes and so on, certainly uh, certainly will will absolutely incorporate those. Uh, what the board was sent, with, which by the way, did not, I didn't realize they, they cut off the names of the school from my apologies for that. Hopefully, I don't know if you were able to work them out uh, cryptically, but you shouldn't have had to. So this, these uh, spreadsheets um, are in, are in response to a couple of things. Uh, one, Ms. Ritchie, just to, to uh, calibrate um, uh, where we got the numbers from. And, and actually, even in that, there, there, there was a, a change or two and a pretty significant change in one of them. I'll just remind you that uh, this, uh, this spreadsheet, uh, I think on the very right hand side, the red column, if you want to open red in your, in your PDF, if not, that's uh, the very right hand column. That inevitably at the very end is the cost of the infrastructure renovations line item. So if you recall, when uh, Mr. Shai presented, uh, we, have, we had additions to the schools, we had demos, demo and site. Uh, we had major renovations, minor renovations, site, scope, and then we had this infrastructure that had a range, and the range was basically about 34 million to 61 million. This is this is this is that, right? Uh, this is this is that particular category, and so this just incorporates the priority one, priority two, and priority three projects over the six years. Or oh, it's over six years. The priority one, two, and three over six years. So. That purple column just sums those up. The FY22 column in between the, the uh, purple and the blue, uh, that's what has been approved for this. Could I interrupt you? Do we have this on the screen? Uh, we can pull it, actually, it should be, oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sorry about that, it wasn't working right there. Uh, the KGND is what is remaining out of the KGND study to be done. So that just gives you a total. <clears throat> you good there? Ellen, I think I, sorry. Are you gonna share, are you gonna share it, John? <laughs> I, well, I tried to share my screen, but it doesn't look like that's what came up. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure what happened. I have it, in, we have it in front of us, in front of the front table. Michelle, is, is Mr. Shag pulling it up? Okay. He has it on his he's screen sharing. He is. Can, I, can, we, can everybody see here? I can see it on the screen also, Dr. Adley. And Michelle, you can put it up on the screen there, can't you? Yes. Okay. So the, the, the uh, second column from the right, the white column is just, a, is that included in the actual project itself that Mr. Shaib has delineated, right? In terms of the renovations and so on, is that already in there? And then ultimately then you get, uh, you get your, your infrastructure number. So this is strictly just that infrastructure number. Uh, John is here uh, to lead us through any questions that the board might have about that. Uh, we went back and looked at what might be done, if what should be held off, uh, as the board asked us to do. And uh, we, 
I can understand at the first glance, this might be a little bit confusing, but we, actually we thought it was the simplest way to actually try to get it all in one, uh, one, one place uh, for each of the schools. But anyway, with that, um, certainly uh, we're open to a, a, the schedule being modified, any additional steps or other ways that need to be taken for the board's purposes and the, for the time's purposes. But we're excited, hopefully, um, I'm hopeful at the end of the day that uh, regardless of a, of a, of a, of a motion or, or not, that, uh, that we'll just take a step forward. But with that, uh, we can open up the floor and uh, Mr. Lynch is here, Rich is here, and also John uh, is gonna be able to speak to the actual chart itself. Thank you, Dr. Adley. Uh, thanks for joining us, Mr. Scheib. Um, Mrs. Ritchie. Um, thank you for putting this together. Um, my, I have a couple of questions, concerns, but my first question is on the two projects that you speak about incorporating into this larger project, which are two projects that we approved in our capital budget that we just sent to the Board of Finance. And the one that I'm most concerned about is the HVAC design because we already deferred that one year. And if it's incorporated into this larger project, that means that particular project won't happen for several years. So I would like to hear, I guess, from Mr. Lynch, why are we now comfortable deferring such an important essential infrastructure project for several years? Okay, good evening. Um, well, it's- Mr. Lynch, could you speak up or check your microphone? Thank you. Um, my microphone on now better? Yeah, perfect, yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, sorry about that. Um, well, <clears throat> we did defer the study, um, but the, the basic heating and ventilation system in the classroom areas of the home school are good. They're in good shape. We did a lot of work on them this summer. Um, the, the main renovation that's thought of for this building is to upgrade from steam heat to hot water heat, um, and then to provide positive ventilation and air conditioning in the original 1932 building, uh, along with ventilation for the library and the gymnasium, better ventilation. Um, we can postpone another year. Um, there's nothing that's catastrophic and has to be fixed right now. Um, so postponing it a year is, is not uh, that bad. We're okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It wouldn't be postponing it a year. It would be postponing it several years if it's incorporated into this particular project. I think if I'm remembering correctly, we wouldn't even be constructing anything until 2024. I have to, uh, yeah, the fall of 2024. Yeah. I think it's 2023. So if, it, if it be finished in 2024. So the construction is 23, 24. It would, it would be, 23 it would, and in 24. So that's several years. 2023 and 2024. Uh, the condition of the system is that we can do that. It's no problem at all. Um, it, you know, the old saying is you change your roof before it starts leaking. So, you know, you fix this ventilation system before it suffers a catastrophic failure. Um, we're probably four to six years away from that failure. I, I like to be conservative in planning, but to wait another uh, two years and have it incorporated into, you know, the reconstruction of the library and the addition onto the back of the building and the removal of the portables. From an economic point of view, it makes sense from a disruption of the school. It makes sense for uh, um, being able to wait that long. It, it makes sense, we're fine. So thank you, Dr. Lynch. If I, could, if I could ask as we go through this, and I think the way you kicked it off, Deb, if we could focus on maybe and I'll, I'll take everyone's, um, if they think this is all right, but if we could just focus on one school at a time. But I think the goal is um, for us to understand that the budget is no longer ours. The budget is moved to the Board of Finance. So we can continue to update the Board of Finance and they're paying attention and they know this great project is going on and they're supportive of it. But what we have to understand is 
we don't have a building committee, we haven't approved ed specs. So let's think through um, any of these projects that can be incorporated into the overall renovation program, great, but understanding that that's two or three years out. Um, we have some time as the budget process continues through the rest of the year with the Board of Finance and the RTM. But I think to the point you just made, Mr. Lynch, I think what we have to understand on each of these buildings is, does it make sense to move and incorporate these into the broader renovation that's occurring? I worry that we made them priority one and put them in this year's capital budget, but then we're okay to move them for a couple of years um, into the renovation thing, which I think to your point, if it makes sense, and you know these buildings and these systems, and if you're being conservative and trying to plan these projects, then let's just make sure we all understand that. Does that make sense? So any other questions or comments on homes, um, them having one of the bigger projects around um, HVAC? Mrs. Ackman, or anything else you wanna to add to that comment, conversation? Yeah, so I'm just, I'm just following up so I know where we are in space. I understand the logic of folding things into bigger projects if it captures an economy of scale. I'm, I'm a little confused in that I don't wanna be presumptuous in the sense that we're saying we'd like all these projects, we'd like them at the same time, we'd like them this way, and yet the building committee hasn't weighed in on that, right? And, and the town respectfully so hasn't weighed in on their viability of it. And yet we're talking about deferring capital items that a month ago we were told needed to be done this year. So I actually see, see strong arguments on, on both sides. I just feel like we're a little bit caught in the in-between at the moment. And I'm not sure how we ended up here. Thank you, Mrs. Ackman. Mr. Brown. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lynch, question for you. We have items on here that are number ones, number twos that you put together this list before we were even talking about trying to renovate some schools. Would that be correct? Or yes. trying? Yes. Okay. So obviously the state of play has changed. So when you did this a few months ago, these were priority ones, but given that something could change in the horizon, these would move to be deferred. Uh, again, if we wind up not going with this plan, these might be rightly project or, you know, tier one or tier two projects, correct? That's true. And, but it, and in I that regard, we didn't uh, defer or fold into this project any of the roofing. Got it. I, I mean, um, it makes perfect sense. You're reacting to what we're talking about as the board. The only question I would have, is there anything say in the next two, three, let's say this goes out four years. Is there anything here you're kind of saying, you know, even if it's four years, I'm not sure that's gonna last that long. This is really something we need to address sooner. So I, I would ask just broadly, are there any items on here that if this is a, let's say four years from now, five years, three years, I'm not sure what the right is, number is. But let's say if you look out on that horizon, we defer because we're talking about this, two years from now, we don't do it. Are, you know, is the roof going to cave in somewhere? Or are we going to have air conditioning that doesn't work? Are there any issues that you see here that couldn't be deferred for four years, given the significant savings in you know, the economies of scale? No, there, there is. Like, as I said before, we, we didn't um, fold any roofing projects into the proposal. Um, you know, everything else, it's like I said, I, I prefer to uh, renovate and replace something before it breaks and becomes useless. Um, so, so just to make sure, yeah, we've changed the game on you a little bit by talking about this. But sitting here tonight, if we're talking about this, if we get to three years from now, four years from now, there's nothing on here you would be uncomfortable deferring in hopes of doing it as part of a bigger plan? That's correct. You know, when I, when I look at the plan that, that we developed and presented to you um, with the construction time frame as it sits now, which I, I made up and, um, you know, John Shy believes my time frame is, is very conservative and can easily be condensed quite a bit. And I, I think he's correct. Um, I, I purposely try to do things like this conservatively to be wary of um, mistakes later on when you try to do too much in a very short period of time. So 
project end on these with the HVAC and the new additions and the library reimagined and the portables gone and the parking redone at Roy at uh, Hindley and Holmes. Um, I I think we we can we can wait to the end of this remove the portables project to, to take care of the heating and ventilating. Um, not only at Holmes, it's also um, being deferred at uh, Royal and and Hindley. Um, I appreciate the thoroughness and uh, for clarifying that. Thank you very much, Mr. Rich. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. Mrs. Ackman. Um, Rich, uh, Mr. Rudolph, have we looked at anything that would say if for some reason these projects don't come off that our capital request, given that we're deferring projects would be so high that it would become burdensome going forward? I'm, I'm very hopeful that this comes forward. I'm hoping in our public hearings, we hear that I've seen nothing but support but I do want to make sure we're staggering. So we're both being fiscally conservative and if these projects don't happen, like our original Royal and Topanique building projects, there were building committees and the work did not commence, then all of a sudden we don't have a balloon capital budget at some point. Sure. Um, so if the project weren't to commence, we'd probably have to accelerate the number of projects uh, down the road, but whether there's a spike or not and how that affects the town would be based on how the Board of Finance and RTM choose to finance those projects. Um, so if they chose, if we had a year where um, the request was four or five million, basically double what you're asking for now, Board of Finance chose to bond those expenditures, you're not going to be hit with that $5 million spike. Um, they could level it out based on how the mechanism they, they choose to fund it. Um, if they choose to not fund anything with any mechanism other than just essentially a cash payment, then you could probably see those spikes or those balloons. Thank you. Mr. Sini. The, the question was posed why we're at where we're at and we're at where we're at because we've done some really awesome work on the um, portables projects, libraries project and uh, renovations of these elementary schools. So we should commend ourselves and administration and the architect that moved us to this, this point. I realize we have a bit of conundrum. We're in the parallel path of bu current budget process. And I think the budget is out of our hands. We have a recommended budget, but I think it's incumbent on us to inform the Board of Finance and the RTM of where we're at. And with uh, you know, the recommendations from the administration, and I'm sure they're watching even tonight. And as we get down this process, the building committee might also be involved at that point. So um, I don't think we have any action other than to inform. Um, being, you know, wearing my previous hat as a planning and zoning chairman, you would never want to do these projects like regrading or any any sort of asphalt project. I shouldn't say regrading, but asphalt project before everything else was done on the site. I mean, you put a bulldozer over brand new asphalt, you're, you're re-asphalting it. So it's common sense to bring these forward um, as concerns. And I thank the input that the administration's had. I mean, it's really thoughtful. But I think it's going to be out of our hands and it's going to be up to the Board of Finance and RTM to make adjustments to our capital budget based on this new information. Thank you, Mr. Sini. I think all good conversation and good comments. And I think, Mrs. Ackman, to your comment, we're, we're kind of in this gray area now. And I think to Mr. Sini's point, it is because of the good work that's been done. I think it's more of a continue to inform the Board of Finance and the RTM as we go through this process. I would ask, I think, to the point of... Um, I'm sorry, I already forgot who asked it, but uh, Mr. Rudel, is there a way to, to show an additional spreadsheet that shows if all this stuff moves into these renovations and these, this building project kicks off, then what does that, I think it was Mrs. Ackman, what does that capital plan look like out the following five years, provided all this stuff moves in? I mean, there's new stuff that'll come on board, but you know, what, what does that look like for the other schools and buildings? So we could, we could put it together based on um, the six-year capital plan that Mike lays mm -hmm. out every year. I mean, obviously, one of the things we talked about during the budget season was that building conditions right. uh, survey. So if we do that down the road, that would obviously alter that slightly. Mm -hmm. um, but based on the information we have, we can put something together. Okay. I think that would be kind of a good piece of information to look at. Mrs. Ackman. I think it would be compelling to do that. It would also help tell our story to mm -hmm. the town mm -hmm. of, look, we want to move ahead with this. And if not, we're looking at these sorts of costs. So... So the town can make an informed financial decision about what's coming its way. Sorry. Yeah, I think a lot a lot of these things are it's it's how we tell the story. So I think telling the story of, you know, exactly how Mitch Mr. Lynch said, you know, we've looked at the potential of moving some of these things with the renovation. 
we're comfortable at with that from his expertise. But here's also a look at what else is on the horizon, even with these renovations. So it just gives the full picture. Mrs. Ritchie. Not to add more work, but um, <laughs> I, I guess from my perspective, I'd like to see what our capital plan would look like if the projects don't move ahead, what our capital plan would look like if we can incorporate some of these projects into that project, that larger project. And then um, what, obviously what's left over, what other, other school projects would be out there, so. Well, I, I think to, but I think to some degree that's already, it, that's just, already out there. Um, well, from it a is, but standpoint. I'd like to see it all okay. incorporated together, I guess, so that we can see it on one piece of paper. This is where we are today. If we don't have this, this project for these three buildings, this is where we'll be if we have this project for the three buildings. And then what, what is left, I guess, after everything gets rolled into the three projects, what else is left? Instead of having to pull all different pieces yeah. of paper, it would be nice to have it just in one. And you don't have to give this much detail, <laughs> but it would just be nice to see where we are in the total after the three projects. Um, Mr. Sense. Rudel and Dr. Adler, does that make sense? Yep. It's work that's not overburdening everything else that's on your plate right now. Good. Okay, Mrs. Mr. Brown. Okay, good. No, I, I okay. agree with Mrs. Richie. We need okay, that. good. Yeah, no, I think that, look, that sets the stage. Um, our, our friends at the Board of Finance are always looking for projections out, which I think we, we continue to do a good job at, but I think this will give a clearer picture of the projects and then over and above that, how our buildings look. And again, that may change. Look, each year at the end of the day, Mr. Lynch will have the opportunity, depending on how this project moves forward, to bring something forward that may need to be done sooner or later outside of the renovation project. And then uh, the new building condition survey may bring some more stuff to light too. So, Dr. Adley? Yeah, I just want to clarify, because I, I know we can do, do this work, bring it back, is, is the sort of, I won't say decision, but are we kind of moving forward with the concept of this? Is that, is that the general uh, tenant of the board? Um, or is it wait and see? Or is it like, where, where, where kind of are we at this? If you asked me to go bring back what we need to kind of bring it back, I'm just trying to get any sense of where we are, so I'm not confused, that's all. Mr. Brown. So thank you. I was actually gonna follow up with you, Duke, because you'd mentioned this at the start of this conversation on the topic. How do you see the next steps and what would you like out of us? Because personally, I know there is a process we have to follow and you know it very well having done it recently for Ox Ridge. That being said, I'd still like Sam enthousi enthusiastically behind this. So whatever the process is, I'd you know, throw, I'd show my support to move it ahead if you could give us what you need tonight from us. Thank you, Mr. Brown. There's other folks um, that have their hand raised, but I think what I outlined earlier was a consensus that this project will continue to move forward um, it has to go through a process of a public hearing. Uh, the ed specs have to come to the board for approval, and then a charge has to be drafted for the chair of the board of ed to go to the town for a building committee. That's how I would see the process working. I think actually Dr. Adley has done a good job in the administration in outlining some of the dates. The only thing that's not in here is a public meeting. So that's what I would hope to see over the next couple of weeks is kind of where do we get that public meeting? confirm when the ed specs will be available, and then I think those dates will fall into place. Mrs. Ackman, no, do you have a hand up? Uh, Mr. Maroney? Yeah, I just have a, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of questions on, um, you know, I really appreciate the plan, and I think, I think our, our conversations in our last few meetings about safety and security have really resonated with, with me, and, and to put, these, put, put them all forward at once and to have security for all students at once is, is a great idea. My, my two questions are, do we have the bandwidth to, to do this, especially with our staff? And, and, and now we have basically four schools all being renovated roughly around the same time. And do we have um, overflow space in case something is delayed or, or slows down that we will have the ability to house the students for, for school? So, so we, did, we, we did look at, that was one of the reasons we didn't, uh, one of the reasons uh, we didn't suggest we do them chronologically, so to speak, um, and then we went back and looked at where people were, where the kids were moving to for Oxbridge, for instance, and DLC and so on. Uh, we felt that with a combination of the classes that opened up uh, and other spaces that we could use, that, that we could actually do this. I mean, that's, so we certainly, certainly appreciate the concern and the, the question, obviously. Um, but that's something that we actually went through 
and delineate can we actually do this for the kids can they move around and um, so, so we felt that we could we could accommodate it i think too mr maroney in, in lessons learned going through the oxridge process that that changed as we went through the process in terms of building a school and moving everyone at once to a three-phase project to a two-phase project so i think as the building committee looks at that in consultation with the administration and the ed specs some of that will play out Mrs. Ritchie? Um, I just wanted to echo my support for what you outlined. I think just looking back on the process for Oxridge, I do believe we started with a public hearing mm -hmm. and then moved into the development and approval of ed, ed specs and then a resolution um, that went before the Board of Selectmen and the RTM. So I'm in, I'm in favor of this, these projects. I, I think it's great work, but on, uh, I think that's, that's great. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Ritchie. Mrs. Parent. Thank you. I'm over here on my own little island. Yeah. <laughs> um, just want a little clarity of what the public hearing would actually be. What would the public be reacting to? Would it be the concepts that were presented? Like how, what, what information goes out to the community about this project? I would say the, the feasibility study would go out. I think all of our friends that listen and tune in all the time have seen this and gone through the process with us with the facilities committee. So much like Oxridge, it's a presentation of here's the facilities project that's moving forward through the process. Okay, but understanding that it's a concept conceptual, correct? These are not the, the actual plan. Correct. Good. Any further questions or comments? Could I just have a consensus from the board that we'll continue on this track that we've talked about this evening? Absolutely. All in favor? Good. Not an official vote. Thank you. Thank. Good conversation as always. Thank you very much. Anything else? Um, Mr. Rudel or Dr. Adley that you need from the board with respect to this? No, I think we're good. I think it's I'm excited about it, obviously. Um, I think everyone is. I don't great. know. John, do you want to say anything? Or uh, oh, I'm scared yeah. to open you up in case you, <laughs> in case you don't stop. But um, Thank you for listening, Mr. Scheib. Good, good, John. Good, good. I, I am good. No, thank you. I, 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 it's good to hear all the conversation because it all um, factors into everything that um, – we can do to help, you know, I think that's really what it comes down to is you, you, you are, you are all putting together a, a great vision and idea for this project. And I think keeping your priorities right there in front of you is, is, is always important. Um, and it's, it's good to have that. It's good to have a plan, even if, um, so that when you do go out for public meeting and you do form the ed specs, around the general concept that addresses your priorities. Everybody's working off the same plan. So I think, I think this is good and, and, and it's great to hear and listen to all the input you, you have and, and we'll keep working with Dr. Adley and, and Rich and Mike and, and um, help, help prepare anything that needs to be prepared moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Scheib. Also, Mr. Lynch, uh, thank you for your uh, ongoing expertise around these buildings uh, when it comes to the specifics and uh, Mr. Rudel and Dr. Adley, thanks for again, organizing all this information. Moving on, um, next topic, uh, discussion on February 2020, 2021 financial report and possible action on proposed budget transfers. Uh, turn it over to Mr. Rudel. Just wait for the PowerPoint to go up. Sure. So this is the financial report through February. Uh, so through February, we are uh, forecasting a year-end surplus of $870,350, or 0.83% of the budget. Uh, the general education RCs forecast a positive $246,000, special education RCs $608,000. Uh, reopening expenditures uh, positive just shy of $15,000 to get you to that $870,000. Uh, similar to the previous month, we are breaking out uh, the COVID expenditures and where the balance is. Uh, there's that small balance in salaries of $14,933. This uh, report does include the supplemental appropriation that was approved by the Board of Finance and RTM for $1,788,130. Uh, the three changes, really uh, the biggest change from the last month to this month is we did receive the supplemental appropriation of $1,788,130. Um, a small balance change in the launch monitor accounts for a remote day at Hindley. And then a small balance for resource materials from a purchase order that was closed out. Uh, because of the large swing from last month to this month, uh, we thought it would be a good idea to show a bridge from the two, uh, the two fiscal uh, reports from January to February. Uh, so in January, we did forecast a deficit of 1,020,293. Again, we did receive the supplemental appropriation. 
Uh, we have some salary savings from some vacant positions recently. Uh, we do have a small deficit, which is before you for a transfer for technology repairs. Um, out of district tuition change slightly, athletic transportation and sports officials show a positive balance due to the shortened winter season. Um, excess costs, we did file our March 1st claim. We're just waiting on our reimbursement. Uh, so that's a positive 27,000. Some small salary changes, ELP tuition with a couple of new students. Um, unemployment claims a small change and then some uh, favorable balance in supplies to get you that 870. Uh, so the salaries are a positive variance of $338,000. Um, interns still remains positive about 45,000. Clubs and councils 18,000. Uh, salary savings and turnover of about 211,000, which includes the vacant positions that we mentioned. Uh, favorable contract uh, negotiations uh, yielded about 48,000, and then those reopening costs that I mentioned, 14,000. Uh, operating expenditures are a positive 441. Uh, we do have a positive balance in legal fees, a uh, little deficit in special education software supplies. Again, the repairs for technology, uh, positive sports officials and athletic transportation. Again, positive adult ed contract support, uh, special education, transportation, and tuition. And then that $20 in the COVID reopening expenditures. Uh, fixed is a slight negative of $29,000. Uh, the biggest reason is unemployment insurance and health insurance. Dental claims have trended slightly higher recently. Uh, and then we do have a positive balance in utilities of about $54,000. Uh, equipment is a positive balance of $516. Just small balances in art, tech ed, and science. Uh, revenue is a positive $118,000. Um, field rentals and building rentals stay relatively the same. We do have a negative building rental offset by a positive field rental. Um, excess costs, we are forecasting a positive $196,000. While we filed our March 1st uh, submission, the reimbursement rate still remains um, unsure, but we are forecasting at 75%. Uh, so we do have two transfers. The first is for $16,400. Uh, that is to support some additional repairs to Chromebooks and devices throughout the district. And then $22,159 for unemployment insurance. Thank you, Mr. Riddle. I'll open it up to any board questions or comments. Good. Uh, Mrs. Ritchie. Sorry, I thought we had a question about the American Rescue Grant and what those funds could be used for if they could, if they were just for non budgeted COVID expenses or could they be used for other COVID budgeted expenses? Uh, so what the state's uh, initial guidance is, and it's still preliminary, uh, is it could be used to uh, support anything that involves reopening schools fully. Uh, so they flag technology, whether it's more devices or software, um, additional staff if needed uh, and preventing any layoffs of staff. Um, the expectation is that it'll take 60 days for the federal government to re release the money to the state and another 60 days for the state to release it to municipalities. And that's to be used, it could be used over three years? Correct. And then could it be used for compensatory services? So, uh, so the answer is yes. To? However, um, if those compensatory services are for an excess cost student, um, you would forego excess cost reimbursement because you can't use two grants to support right. uh, the same claim. So if we already use it for compensatory services, we would just wanna be careful in terms of whether or not it's an excess cost student or not, uh, so that we maximize the dollars coming to variant. But it could theoretically be used for something educational or maybe social emotional. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Sini. In, in the timing, Rich, like I know it's early and yes. there's a whole bunch of steps that we have to uh, walk through, so the, but what are you thinking? My guess is the money probably won't be available until July or August. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? I have a motion to move the uh, budget transfers. Uh, Mrs. Parent, second by Mrs. Ackman. All in favor? That is unanimous. Uh, minus Mrs. Oh, she joined us. Yeah. Hi, Jill. Thanks for joining us remotely. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Discussion and possible action on establishing a graduation date, hopefully in person on a field, 80 degrees, sunshine and no humidity. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> they deserve it. Yes. <laughs> so I want, I want to recognize Alan and the uh, high school administration for getting all these uh, end of year activities in line and uh, for, for actually the planning that they're doing. Um, I'm partisan. 
to conversations with other superintendents about what they're doing. Um, and I'm very pleased to say that the high schools is in many ways ahead of the game, or certainly at least leading the pack in terms of where, where we're going and what we're doing and the plans for it. So uh, we do have, which is maybe unusual this year, perhaps, um, that there's a, a rain date that I'm suggesting. Uh, so June 16th, uh, we had to make up a day. So that's the 177th day as opposed to 180 uh, that we would uh, with schedule graduation for. Uh, we'll see just how that plays out at the exact time. I know traditionally, I believe it's five o'clock or so, but we would we'll see just sort of how it plays out over the next couple of weeks in terms of uh, how we can actually organize it given the spacing requirements. The reason for the 17th is really, since we can't really have it inside, there's no, uh, we're trying to give two spots potentially, you really have two spots and uh, the 17th in the morning and the 17th sometime in the afternoon if, if there's rain more than a p.m. type thing. So uh, so they're looking for the 16th with the with the rain date uh, for, for the 17th. After that, uh, we'll have to be very creative. <laughs> but um, I'm pleased that we're going to uh, be able to give the kids an experience outside, a nice cel a celebration. Uh, the number of uh, guests and so on still didn't need, need to be determined, but I'm not sure that we'll be able to bring car loads of people, I don't think, uh, given the, the requirements that we have to adhere to. But uh, we're excited to be able to have a graduation uh, for our students uh, and our seniors. And uh, so that's that's the recommendation for the board. Thank you. I would just ask and, and thank you to everyone up at the high school and um, Principal Dunn and everyone in the administration. I know in my tenure on the board, uh, the board has always asked and seen what resources you may need in terms of tents or anything like that. Um, if there's any resources that you wish us to look at or consider um, to celebrate these students, just please let us know and, and you know, bring that to the board's attention. So a motion to approve uh, the graduation date of June 16th, 2021 with a rain date of June 17th, 2021. A motion, Mr. Sini, second by Mrs. Ackman. Um, all those in favor, uh, that is unanimous with Mrs. McCammon online. Thank you all, that's exciting. Um, we look forward to that. Um, action items, personal items, appointments, resignations, and retirements. Uh, Mrs. Sion. So the PAR tonight continues to reflect resignations and retirements as people make plans for next year. And it also reflects that one of our very favorite special education paraprofessionals now has a job as a custodian at the high school. And while the students will miss him, it's a significant pay increase and he's worked hard for us. And so we're happy to reward him in this way. Thank you, Mrs. Sion. We have a motion to approve the personal action report. Uh, Mr. Maroney, second by Mrs. Parent. All those in favor, that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, Michelle, we'll open it up to uh, public comment. Good evening. If you would like to speak during public comment, please click the participants icon on the bottom of your Zoom screen. When it is your turn to speak, the facilitator will identify you and announce that you're unmuted for public comment. You will have up to three minutes to comment. There are no raised hands at this time. Thank you, Michelle. Um, again, appreciate everyone participating tonight through Zoom. Thank you to all the great students that um, appreciate us during this appreciation month. Thank you, Dr. Adley and the administration and the teachers and the students for these great cards. Um, it's great to see those on our desks. May I have a motion uh, to adjourn? Mrs. Ackman, second, Mr. Sini, all those in favor. Mrs. Stein. Mrs. Stein, <laughs> all those in favor. <laughs> That is your dad.